Hi guys, welcome to Go Tutorial Part 7. My name is Tensor from the Tensor Programming Blog. So today we are going to create a module that allows users to sign up, sign in, and log out from our uh, application. Now we're going to create this independent of our other application and the reason we're going to do this is so that we can actually eventually merge them together and create one large application. So one of the cool things about Golang is that you can actually divide a lot of your application into smaller applications which do specific things and then it will handle it pretty well and this is actually part of the reason why Go was created in the first place if you remember Google created Go mainly for cloud computing so creating web applications that are built on cloud infrastructure so this kind of fragmentation or rather encapsulation of files and stuff is very strong for a cloud environment. So we're in a new folder and this folder is actually inside of our web folder which is our where our actual other web app is. And we have a our static folder here so this is from our other place. It's got the bootstrap CSS in it as you can see. It's got the fonts and it's got the JavaScript that we were using, the Bootstrap, jQuery, Modernizer, etc. And we've got, we've brought in our base.html, which is our skeleton template. Now we've removed the uh, navbar from this particular one because we don't have a navbar yet. And we've also brought in our index, which allows us to import our style sheets, our JavaScript, and our main body here. As you can see, we're still using that block way of doing things. We've created three new HTML pages. This one is just for our, it's just going to be a dummy page so that when we log in we have something to actually say, hey you logged in. And that's what this is. So as you can see it just says, hello user, you know, what would you like to do today? And then there's a button at the bottom with a method of post and an action of log out that allows us to log out. Our main HTML file, it's also a main block here as you can see, is a just a form that allows us to sign up. So it's got a user, or sign in rather. It's got a username field and a password field and a submit button. And as you can see it's got a method of post and it points to the login uh, area of our HTTP. We also have a link at the bottom that lets us go to our sign in or sign up page. Now our sign up page is just a larger form, also has a post to sign up, and it's got a username, first name, last name, email, password, and a submit button. And we also have a link to get back to our main index page. So let's actually build our first file. We're going to call it main.go. And this is going to be package main for now, because we need something to allow us to actually execute all of this and we're going to create our imports. So we're going to import four different libraries. We're going to import the standard net HTTP library, the template library. Then we're going to import two new libraries. One is called the Gorilla Mux library and the other one is called the Gorilla Secure Cookie library. Now the Gorilla Mux library gives us an alternative router that we can use and the secure cookie library gives us the ability to encode our cookies. So because we are letting users log in and log out, we want to use cookies. And of course we need to encrypt our cookies to make sure everything is secure. And that's why we're, we're bringing in our secure cookie library. Our MUX library though is going to give us uh, some alternatives and a little bit of difference in our in the way that our actual roots and dispatcher handles everything. So MUX actually just stands for um, a server multiplexer, which is just basically just a server. So a root dispatcher and handler. So we need to set up these two things real quick and let's do that. So here we are, we're setting up our cookie handler. And we're saying, okay, secure cookie new, and we're creating two new one, two new uh, encryptions. One of them is 64-bit, and the other one is 32-bit. This is going to allow us to encrypt our cookies. Now we are instantiating our router, so we're just saying, okay, mux new router, and we're going to call it router. And this will make it so that we can access the router inside of our main function. 
here let's actually make our main function and we're just going to set up a very simple uh, server here so we're just saying um, HTTP handle and we're passing in the index of our HTTP and we're passing in the router so we're saying okay use the router and then we're just saying listen and serve on port 8000 and then we're passing in nil we also need to serve our static folder so here we are we're serving our static folder HTTP.handle static we're stripping the prefix and then we are serving that file server so here we go we're doing this so that we can serve all of our scripts and our CSS and our fonts and so that they will actually work inside of our templates when we create them so now we're going to create another file and this is just for encapsulation sake we're going to call it data.go and this is also going to be a package main inside of this package we're going to create a user struct so our user struct as you can see here it has a unique user ID which is going to be of type name it's got a or of type string rather it's got a first name a last name a username an email and a password field so this is all we're going to do inside of our data.go the reason we're doing things like this is when we actually start having more data features inside of our uh, program we can just add to this file if we wanted to add our page struct from our other uh, web app area we could just you know copy and paste it into this file and then it would be available to all the other main files another thing that we need to note here in go if you have a uh, function or a variable with an uppercase letter it is exposed so these are public this is a public struct and these fields are all public because they are all uppercase variables which means that they are shared between files and shared between functions and stuff like that so we also need to create another go file and this is going to be for our cookie handler so we're going to call it just cookie.go and of course it's going to be package main we need to also import the net HTTP into this file our first function inside of our cookie.go file we're setting up a session so it's called set session now we're creating a map and this is sort of like JSON as you can see it has sort of the structure of JSON and we're going to encode our username and our password from our user variable so they're going to get passed through here and get encoded by our cookie handler dot encode function and then we're going to call on our cookie our cookie struct that's built into the HTTP library and then we're going to pass the value which is going to be all of this stuff as encoded by the handler here into it so this will allow us to create the actual cookie encode the cookie and then put it into the browser so now we need to create a function to actually get some of that data out of this cookie and we need to create one to get specifically for this tutorial we're just going to need the username so here's our function to get the username it's appropriately named get username we're passing in our HTTP request and we are returning the username as a string so we're saying if cookie E equals to r dot cookie and we're saying okay if we have a session cookie then we need to make a map which is a map of strings as a value of string rather than a, a key of string and then we're going to decode that session cookie we're going to get the cookie dot value which is this here which is all this here and we're going to put in our empty map and basically then get out the username here by calling on cookie value name and then we're going to return the username from this function our last function is just going to clear our cookie this function is very simple it's just clear session so we pass in our HTTP response writer and then we set our cookie and we just clear the value so we set it to equal to an empty string and then we give it a max age of negative one which makes it expire as soon as it's created and then we use the HTTP.setCookie function to basically pass it to the browser. So this basically just destroys the cookie. Okay, so that's all we're going to end up doing inside of our cookie and data files. So we can close both of these files now. So now let's actually create some of the stuff that we need inside of our main package. So keeping in mind what we have inside of our HTML files, 
we need to create some handlers to handle those specific templates. All right, so this is what our handlers are going to look like. As you can see here, we calling we're calling on the router, which is our uh, which we're bringing in from the Gorilla Mux library, and we're passing that handle func um, into it, and we're saying, okay, we're going to pass a function called index page, and it's going to be on the index HTTP. Then we're going to pass a login and logout. And both of these can only be of method post type. Then we're going to have an example page function for our example pipe. And then we're going to have a sign up function and it's going to have methods of post and get. So let's actually create the index page function. This, this handler is really simple. As you can see, we create a, an empty user. Then we assign our template to parse files. So we actually parse our base html which is our skeleton here then we pass our index.html which is all of our scripts and CSS and then we pass our main.html which is our sign up page or our sign up form rather then we uh, execute the templates and of course we pass in w and base base is of course the name of this template here because we want it to be our main template we call this and then we pass in our empty user. Then we handle our error simply by uh, throwing an HTTP status internal server error if there is one. So that's all we have to do for the index page. Let's create our login and logout. So for now, login is pretty simple. All we are doing with our login function for now is we are getting the form value for our uname. So as you can see from our main.html, we have a form value and it's called uname. So we're getting what's in there. And then we're getting the password value as well. Then we are setting a variable for our redirect. So we're saying, okay, redirect to the pipe for now. And then we're making an if statement. And the if statement saying, if name is empty and password is empty, then do not actually work. Then we're setting up our session by passing in um, a user with a username and a password set to username and pass. And then we're, re we're changing our redirect variable to the example page. So if this actually uh, succeeds, then we will actually be able to go forward through our login. So if we hit the submit button, we'll actually go to our example page. Uh, but if, it, if there's nothing inside of those two uh, form values, then we won't actually be able to go forward. It'll just reload our index page. We're just using a 302 redirect. We're passing the redirect variable here, and we're passing in our response writer and our request. Our logout is going to be very similar, except that we don't need to get the form values because we're just logging out, and we don't really need to set up a redirect variable. So here's our logout handler. All we do is we're calling our clear session function, which is coming from our cookie, as you can see here clear session. Then we are just making a redirect and we're redirecting back to index. So it'll delete the cookie and then it'll send us back to the index page. So now we need our example uh, page function. And here we are. Here's our example page. So we are rendering, rendering a template because this is a get method. We're passing in base, index, and the internal.html, which is just this file. And then we are uh, getting the username. So we're actually getting the username from the cookie. And then we're saying, okay, if the username is not empty, then we render the template and then we pass in a user instance with the username equaling username. And then we handle the error with yet again another HTTP status internal server error. Finally, we need to create a signup function and our signup function is actually going to use a switch statement, sort of like how we did our upload function in the last tutorial. So in our signup function, we're going to have, we're going to do a switch on r dot method. We're going to have a case of get and a case of post. For our case of get, we're going to render the page. So we're going to create a template. We're going to parse the files, sign up, index, and base. Then we're going to create a empty user variable and we're going to pass it into execute template. So this will actually create the, uh, the page on the get method. Then on our post method, 
we will actually get we will read in all the form values so we need to create variables for each we're just taking the first name the last name the email the username and the password and then we're actually creating a user with all of these variables then we are creating a cookie with all of these variables inside of it and then we are redirecting to our example.html so this is actually all we needed to do for our for this specific tutorial we created a main file with all of our handlers in it and we could actually further encapsulate our files by creating a handler.go file if we wanted to then we have our cookie file which is the just the simple logic to create a cookie and then we have our data file which is just our simple structure all right so to actually run this this uh, web app we need to run all the files at once so I'm gonna actually build this web app so I'm gonna run go build and we're gonna pass in all of our files so we're gonna go main.go data.go and cookie.go for the record if you want to um, do this on Mac or Linux you can actually just type in star.go and it will pattern match all the Go files and then build all of them together. For now though, because we're on Windows, we need to pass in all three files. So let's actually build them. So as you can see here, it created a main.exe file. If we run that main.exe file, so here's our index. As you can see, it's just a login form. And I have put in some CSS to style it a bit. We also have a link to our sign up form. So let's go to our signup form. As you can see here, we've got a username, first name, last name, email, and password. Let's actually create those. So username will be Tensor. First name will be John Doe. And our email will be test at test.com. Our password will be password. If we hit submit, this will go to our welcome screen so it'll just say welcome hello user tensor what would you like to do today and then we have a logout but before we log out let's actually look at the cookie that was created so as you can see here we have a cookie called session and here's all the content as you can see it's all encrypted this is actually our username and password or actually it would be all of our username password first name last name and all that stuff it's all being encrypted and thrown onto this cookie so when we actually log out, so if we click log out, this cookie should get removed. So let's reload this. So there, as you can see, the, the storage cookie is gone because we cleared it. All right, guys. So before I close out this tutorial, I wanted to let you know that JetBrains is actually building a Golang, to, or Golang IDE. It's called Gogland. It's kind of cool. If you guys want... Uh, you can sign up to get an early build. You just put in your email. And you talk about whether or not you actually use Go. Stuff like that. And then they will send you an early build. I still haven't gotten one myself because I signed up for it maybe like two days ago. But um, yeah, I'm really happy with the, you know, the idea products, IntelliJ, and I really like PyCharm as well. And I'm really excited that they're going to create a Go IDE as well. Even though they're go plugin is really really good so yeah i just thought i'd let you guys know about this if you haven't already heard about it anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial if you did please feel free to subscribe and like if you have any questions of course feel free to comment and if you have any grievances go ahead and arrow them in the comment section even dislike if you want i hope you guys have a good day